black body radiation. This is what this video is about. Black body radiation is emitted from any objects which generate their own heat from within. So it's not something that, uh, that reflects heat from some other objects. So for example, a human body, a human body emits black body radiation. And when you have a look at uh, this particular fellow here, uh, you can't see uh, what kind of radiation he's emitting. In fact, with the use of an infrared camera, you can see this, uh, this pattern here, which indicates that in fact, he is giving out infrared radiation, in other words, heat. And most of us are aware that under normal circumstances, we give out heat. So that is black body radiation. Now, his temperature there is probably around about 37, uh, 37 degrees Celsius. If we have a look at a stove, a stove there, as you can see, is red hot. And if we think about the radiation that's coming out from it, first of all, there's heat. And secondly, there is light. So this object then, of course, is a good deal hotter. And once we get uh, to uh, hotter and hotter objects, what we find is that the frequency that is emitted becomes higher and higher. Or if you like, if you like the wavelength becomes shorter and shorter. Now, at the moment, we can see that that is red hot. If we have a look at a lava that's coming out of a volcano, then you can see that not only is this red, but in some places it's actually a yellow and perhaps closer to white. That means that it is giving out colours in all levels of this, the coloured spectrum if it's white. So again, what we're doing here is discovering that it's the radiation is in the higher reaches of the electromagnetic spectrum. The frequency is increasing or the wavelength is getting shorter. Again, if we have a look at a light globe, uh, we can see that that is very, very close to white, but we might notice that it is, it's got a yellow tinge. So again, that's not uh, totally um, uh, totally uh, white, uh, which means to say that we've probably got a, a mixture and in that mixture we've probably got a little bit more red than we have, for example, blue. Again, now if we have a look at really, really hot metal, they talk about this as being white hot. Now, the stars that we look at from time to time, uh, they're close to white hot. In fact, they can become hotter than that, and we call them, well, we, we find that they're blue. Now, what we're going to have a look at now is a program which, in fact, breaks down the, or separates the wavelengths into the different frequencies or wavelengths that come from black bodies. In other words, any objects that are generating their own heat. What they do, these black bodies, is uh, emit a continuous spectrum. And a little application that you can download or that you can look at online from a website called FET, that's spelt P-H-E-T. You can have a look at this yourself. This application will provide us with the opportunity of having a look at the different frequencies or different wavelengths that are given out by hot bodies, by, uh, in other words, black body radiation. We'll cross now live to FET. So this is the FET simulation software, and it's software which will help us analyse what radiation comes from any individual hot object. In other words, any uh, black body, body that's giving out its own self-generated heat, light, etc. 
Now, <clears throat> the first person that we, or the first object that we had a look at was uh, the human being. So if we have a look at what's uh, offering here on this uh, simulation, first of all, we can adjust the temperature, the temperature here in Kelvin. On this horizontal axis down here, we have the wavelength of that radiation. And here we have a measure of how much of each one of these wavelengths we're going to get from our irradiating object. We had we saw a picture of the human person. Now our body temperature is around about 37 degrees. So in Kelvin, that's uh, 273 plus 37, which of course is 310. So if I change this number here now to 310, then what I ought to expect here is a graph of the radiation. Now at the moment, I've got no graph there at all. So what I've got to do is adjust the uh, the uh, adjustments here. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is press zoom out and see if at some stage I can get the radiation. Well, I've adjusted it out there. The other thing that I've got to adjust is uh, this one here. Adjust for maybe this one. Fill this up. See how much radiation I'm going to get. Okay, I've got some radiation there now. So I'm going to go in, in, in. And, and you can see the shape of this curve. And what it shows here is that we've got a certain amount of these, <coughs> these uh, rays, rays of those wavelengths here. And we get to what we might call the wave length of maximum intensity. In other words, this wavelength down here, what would it be? Well, there's 48. We can probably read that from here uh, and uh, measure the wavelength. And so that is the maximum wavelength that is emitted by an object at uh, 310 degrees. So that's a human body. Now, if I adjust this still further, um, we can see the uh, curve, the energy distribution curve for, for an oven, the inside of an oven. Now, that's going above the top there. So an oven there looks as if it's got a temperature of around about 750 degrees. Now you can see that this has gone off the scale and what I've got to do is adjust that scale. So I'll bring this down a bit and I'll adjust this, which really means that what we're looking at is a shift of the wavelengths towards this end of the spectrum. In other words, uh, wavelengths of shorter wavelength. Now here, you may be able to see the visible spectrum. So what we're still in here, if we check this, check out these wavelengths, is in fact the infrared. So uh, an oven there is giving out heat waves. Uh, back with the human person, uh, we saw what they're giving out is heat radiant heat, infrared. Let's have a look then at a light bulb. Now, uh, a light bulb, uh, of course, has a quite a much higher temperature. I'm not too sure what it is. What I'll do is I'll move this up and adjust that there to the height here, the light bulb, and uh, that's too high. Okay, so that's round about it. So that's 3,090 degrees Kelvin. Again, what we've done here is seen that we've got an object there which has got a, giving out a lot, lot more lot, uh, energy. So if I reduce this now so that it's back on the scale, the intensity of this light is much, much greater than what we saw for the oven. Now again, I'll extend this, we'll zoom out, zoom out, zoom in I should say. And now we can see that from a light, now this is an incandescent light, 
It's one of the old fashioned lights that's made of tungsten and you heat that up and it gets so hot that it gives out light. And what you can see here are the frequencies or the colours that it's giving out. So it's giving out mostly heat, as we can see here in the infrared area, but we're also starting to get some red light, some red wavelengths, yellow, um, some green, blue, a little bit of blue, and a very small amount of violet. Uh, up here, we're showing the blue, green, and red. And over here, we're giving uh, what this uh, uh, light, the colour that the light would actually look like. So it's uh, it's an orange colour that's coming from the light. Again, what we notice is that this curve is has got the same, roughly the same shape, but it's more towards this side of the spectrum, more towards the shorter wavelengths, more towards the higher frequency. Again, we can have a look here and pick out a uh, maximum, a, a wavelength of maximum intensity. Now that wavelength, that wavelength of maximum intensity, where we get most of a particular wavelength, that wavelength is most important. Why? Because it tells us the temperature. If we can analyze any source of radiation and find the curve like this, find the maximum, go down here, we can work out what its temperature is. And this, in fact, is how we work out the temperature that's on the surface of stars. That brings us to the last one, which is here, which is the sun. I'll adjust this now, and you can see that it's really changing this curve. We're getting a a, a lot of uh, a lot more energy coming from it. The amount of energy is I'm going to say off the planet, but I won't. I'll reduce this, and I will post that, and that's too high, so it's better seen there. So this gives us a measure of the intensity. It's very, very much more intense. And again, you can see that this has shifted across to here. Now, over here, we can see the amount of blue, green, and red. And when we have a look at this, then we can see that the uh, sun looks almost white. Just that very, very slight hint of being yellow. As a matter of fact, um, it, it, the sun does take on a more yellow uh, uh, appearance once the blue from the sky is kind of uh, taken out or scattered out of the light as it comes through. So looking more closely at this, what you see here again coming from the sun is a lot of heat radiant heat, infrared, here, light, visible light. And over here, this area of the spectrum, we see, of course, is ultraviolet. Now, uh, our temperature of the sun here, as we can see, is 5,700. Now, we do get stars which have uh, temperatures going up to 30,000. 30,000 degrees Celsius. If I bump this up, the highest I can get here on this simulator is 9,000. I'll just reduce this again. And what you can see here is that we're getting more and more in the UV uh, section. So with our uh, higher temperature stars, we, we can get um, here we've got 9,255. So we've got a lot of uh, the energy coming to us in the UV uh, section. Boost this up to 30,000, 60,000. Then again, we get much, much more of these higher frequencies or these shorter wavelengths. Again, 
The key thing that we need to notice about this black body radiation is that the peak, the maximum wavelengths that we get, the maximum intensity, I should say, the maximum intensity wavelength gives us an indication of the temperature of the object that we are looking at. And this is the usefulness of uh, our black body radiation. Very useful when it comes to the sun and stars.